What's up guys? Welcome to a day in the life. Just got out of the shower, getting ready. It is my last Monday, at least, of being a personal trainer. Follow me along and I'll tell you more about it. All right, it is now 10 to 8. I'm on my way to the office. The office, you say? Yes, I will show you the office because I have a new office situation. Um, but today, this is going to be, it's funny because I'm doing it this today, but it's the last Monday that this will be my exact schedule. Um, I hope in the future to be leaving my house probably more like 7.30 rather than 7.50 um, because this is the last day that um, I'm going to be a personal trainer or the, this is the last Monday that I will have to fit in my personal training in person lifestyle um, into my regular Monday. So tomorrow will be my last day um, as a personal trainer in person. 100% um, of my work is gonna be um, online health coaching, which includes workouts that just won't be in person at a gym. So Mondays are my big check-in day. So this is like my biggest kind of marathon day in front of the computer, I'm going through um, my entire roster of clients and get going over the check-in information that they have given me and then giving them feedback changing their programs making updates or just giving them a add a girl great job keep up the good work um, depending on what you know the individual what, what, what we need what they need for their program and, and where they are in life so it's a hard it's just like a long kind of grueling day like I enjoy it but it's the most kind of like nose to the grindstone productive day that I, um, that I have all week because I'm trying to get all of it done in a reasonable amount of time. And so everybody has their updates done by the end of, by the end of Monday, kind of by the end of the business day. So this morning's in-person client was from six to seven. I came home, <laughs> I like, I don't normally take a shower in the morning, but this morning I took a shower. Um, basically I was too lazy last night and I decided to do some meal prep stuff that was gonna last me, you know, all week long rather than taking the like the time and energy to take the shower. So if I had to choose one or the other, I was like, all right, I'll take the shower in the morning. Um, but I literally went in to train my client with like wet floppy hair with like my cowlick and everything. Um, so I just came home to finish getting ready, packed clothes to change into. So I'm wearing what I will wear to the gym and then um, I packed clean clothes to change into. And so that's kind of what the morning plan is gonna be about. So I'm gonna get into the office. It'll be probably 8.15 or so um, by the time I kind of like sit down on my seat and start working. And then my plan is gonna to be to work until 10. And then right around 10, kind of wrap up where, wherever, find a good place to a finishing point, walk across the street to the gym, get my lift in, which will be roughly an hour, walk back. So it'll be a nice kind of like movement break, way to break up the day but also get my workout in um, one thing as I've been more and more busy with my health coaching job is that there's always more work to do and it can be really easy it, it has been really easy to just kind of put aside the things that I need to do for me in lieu of getting more work done the work is going to be there so I just am really making a concerted effort and putting the priority in to like no I need to carve out this chunk of time this workout is going to happen today and if that means I end up spending an hour later working in the day that's fine but I know that I'm happy to get my lift in at 10 o'clock I'm not gonna want to get this lift in at 5 o'clock if I'm in the office until four or five, like that afternoon, I just don't like to lift in the, it, to work out in the afternoon, evening. So um, I need to make it happen when it is much more likely to happen. And so, yeah, it's gonna happen at 10 o'clock today. I'll show you, I'll prove it to you. So I'll just be checking in throughout the day, tell you what I'm doing. I'm gonna show you what I'm eating, uh, the stuff that I've prepped to make my work week um, really smooth as far as my, my nutrition goes. And I, I basically have like 90% of what, I, what I'm gonna be eating for the week already sorted out. And um, all I have to do is just kind of pack my bag and then just eat the food I brought. So next up, I'll show you the new office space scenario. So this is the office, our lobby. It's an acupuncture and Chinese medicine clinic. So we have all sorts of, it's like an apothecary in here. In this room, we actually have a hyperbaric chamber. The uh, chiropractors next door sublease this room. So that's kind of cool. And then we have a couple of treatment rooms. So this is an acupuncture room. 
all sorts of doodads in here. And then we have a couple hypnotherapists who work here. And this is this amazing like anti-gravity chair. And then her other treatment room. I spent a lot of time in here before. And then my room right here. So I've just got, of course, got to have a bookshelf. Got my little Banksy there. That's a picture I took in Yosemite this uh, this summer. And then this is a picture from Ireland. I think it was 2017 that I went there. And then there's just all my all my junk. All right. So the story on the office is about a month ago or so. My friend Kim and I were out at lunch over the weekend, and that that office that I showed you where the hyperbaric chamber is, she's gonna be losing that sublease soon. The chiropractors are moving down the street, and so they will no longer be in need of that uh, of that treatment room for the hyperbaric chamber. So she's losing that sublease, uh, which is a big part of her paying for her overall, you know, lease here, right? So we were, she was saying like, oh man, wouldn't that be so cool if you could work in there and like we could like hang out and get to work together. Like, girl, I don't think I haven't thought about it. That would be amazing. And she's like, well, you know what? I have that big front desk area. Why don't you just, like, what if you just use the front desk? Because that's all you really need is a desk space, right? And I'm like, yeah, hmm, interesting. That's all right. Let's think about that. So I could not could not stop thinking about it, and I was like, "Hey, let's try it." So about three Mondays ago, sit down at the, like basically the receptionist desk, start working. Meanwhile, she comes into here, which was previously her break room, and about halfway through the day, she's like, "Hey, why don't we switch places? Like, what if you use this space? If all you need is the office space, you can close the door when you need to. You won't look like you're the receptionist with my clients come in, and like, let's see if it works." So we did that the rest of the day. I was so productive. I couldn't believe how productive I was. And so we just continued to do it. Um, we have had to make some, between having the hypnotherapist, so we have two hypnotherapists who use that room with the, with the cool chair I showed you. Um, sound travels quite a lot. We have drop ceilings here. And then just like the interior walls aren't very well insulated and there were like big cracks under the doors. And so between her working in the adjacent room to them and then me having to talk either whether I'm making videos for clients or I'm, I'm on a Zoom call with them, um, we had to do some kind of like soundproofing stuff. So we got the like um, door skirt thingies at the bottoms of the doors. You know, we've got some more rugs in here. We've done some things, just, just putting some stuff up on the walls has helped with like the echoiness and the sound traveling and so now we have like this amazing little cooperative group of us here that all work um we work completely separate businesses but everything that we do really complements each other so we're a great referral source for each other and then we're just friends and it's really great to just be able to work together and i can't tell you how productive i am so anyway um i probably should stop chatting to you and actually um put that nose to the grindstone get some work in and i'll check in with you probably when i'm headed to the gym actually i'm gonna eat first so let me show you what i'm gonna have So I currently, or I recently had a eczema flare up and um, I do have a sensitivity to egg whites in particular. And so I've been doing no eggs for about a month or so. And so I'm gonna show you this breakfast. This has pretty much been my breakfast 80% of the time um, for the last month or so. So I do a bagel thin, like Thomas's bagel thins. Whoops, just lost a little piece of cheese. Little corner of my cheese fell off. So a bagel thin, a turkey burger bun, a piece of cheese, and then some red onion. So I'm just gonna nuke this for about 35 seconds or so, and I'm gonna have a delicious high protein, egg-free breakfast. The great thing about those two is I just cook off the whole package of turkey burger patties of four of them. Um, just assemble, you know, let the, let it cool and then assemble them, put them in little baggies, to have them in the fridge ready to go, just pop them into my bag for the day. Um, whoever you're like, Aaron, there's only four, but there's five days in the week. But on Thursdays, I always have breakfast out at this uh, restaurant where we have a, a weekly meeting. So it works out actually perfectly for me. All right, a little, little later than planned. It's 1040 and I'm walking over to the gym. So let's see, where am I? Across the street that way. It's a, it's a really big intersection, um, but across the street is the gym. So it's uh, Mondays in particular, are a very sedentary day for me. The gym is right across the street. So I might as well just walk maybe 500 steps, 1,000 steps that I'm getting, probably 1,000 steps total. Um, but it's important to be able to work in that movement time when you can. Um, it's nice and mental clarity as well. And uh, it's, a bit, it's nice for mental clarity. And then it just kind of like helps me get in the zone a little bit to get into like movement zone out of work 
or out of out of out of like my work headspace and into more of a physical activity headspace to uh, use my body to get to the gym. Just finished up my workout and walking back. I'm walking a little funny. Uh, his legs today, and um, I actually have a lower body injury, my uh, my hamstring injury, so it's really limited. It really limits what I'm even um, like allowed or can do pain free. Um, for my lower body, so it's really really annoying. It's been going on for like a year. Just it's a thing um, But I just torched my quads on the leg extension machine and if you ever work out like at multiple gyms or You're used to one gym and you go to a different gym different machines feel different even like if they're, if they're made by a different brand if the Mechanism is just a little bit different. It's crazy How much more you will feel like a, a little bit of a different? um machine compared to what you're used to. I'm like walking goofy right now. My legs are so pumped full of blood. All right, back in the office and change. So it's time to get back to work, but little piece of advice. If you have to work out in the middle of your day, whether it's gonna go for a brisk walk, going to the gym, like whatever, whatever your workout is for you, or if you're trying to fit in a workout and you're trying to figure out like, how can I make this happen and not be like all sweaty and gross afterwards, here's my advice. So pack some clean clothes, including deodorant do your workout, whatever that's going to be, wait till you stop sweating. So get it like cool down, stop sweating, then change your clothes. If you can do a little, you know, paper towel, soap, you know, clean up a little bit, put on the fresh clean clothes, fresh uh, layer of deodorant, and you should be good to go for the rest of the day. As long as you're not like doing anything like, you're not going to be like up and like if you're a chiropractor, you're gonna be up in people's business. Maybe you wanna be able to fit in a shower, but a lot of times it's like, it's hard to try to fit that in. If you're trying to fit in a workout during your lunch break or the middle of your day, they can be just kind of, it can make it feel like there's just too much to do. You're not gonna have enough time. So you might as well just skip the workout altogether. So I'm here to tell you, just stop sweating, fresh clothes, fresh coated deodorant, and you're good to go. All right, it's two o'clock now. I'm, um, I think about halfway through my client check-ins. Man, I am feeling some anxiety today. Um, I don't know if it's book stuff um, or what, that's kind of been seemingly what's been causing some increased anxiety recently. It's been like the book is almost out and just like, I would hope to be able to just reframe it and be like, I'm excited about it and I'm feeling excitement about it. But there is, I, I, I can only, I can only think that this anxiety I'm feeling is actually like kind of like fear of the unknown. What's going to happen when the book comes out? Like, how is it going to be received? Will I make my money back? Like, I don't know. Um, exploring like feelings, emotions, that kind of stuff in therapy. Um, and, and one of the things that's really apparent is I basically, I, I will feel, physically feel things in my body. And it's like detached from the emotion. And so I will have to, I, I, w I won't be aware of having emotions until I'm having a physical symptom basically. And then I have to like explore like, why am I feeling that way? Um, so I'm having a really high anxiety day today. And um, I actually just happened to have a psychiatry call or a call with my psychiatrist just a little bit ago. And one of the symptoms of anxiety that I'll have is like, you know that feeling when you stand up too fast, that like head rush, like drop in blood pressure? It will feel like that, but kind of like all the time or like like repeatedly throughout the day and there could be zero position change happening. Um, I've had cardiac testing, I've had hypostatic blood, uh, blood pressure testing, all that kind of stuff. Everything checks out fine. I have the most minor of, uh, of uh, heart murmurs, but like my heart checks out fine. It's all anxiety related. So I actually did just take half of a Xanax. Um, because I have to be able to get through my work day and, um, I've already, I've already exercised, like I'm already doing the things that I would do to decrease my anxiety. My, 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 my friend is not here in the, in, in, my friend is not in the room to stick needles in my, in my ear to give me some, uh, anxiety relief, um, in acupuncture form. Maybe I'll put a picture here of when she did that a week ago. I actually did a zoom call with a bunch of needles in my ear with a new client. Um, so yeah, update, other, th other than that, other than like what's happening in my, my chest and my head right now, um, had some food, I didn't show it to you, Greek yogurt, strawberries, almonds, and honey. And um, yeah, I've made a good, made good progress as far as my check-ins go. I've got one um, Zoom client. I have, I have one private, well, I have two private clients, but one private client that I see on Zoom twice a week. And um, she's kind of a special case. 
everybody, everybody's special, but she in particular is special. She has cerebral palsy and she, I see her for kind of a combination of like speech and physical stuff. Um, and so totally different from than anything that I do with other clients. Um, and so I've got her coming up in about 10 minutes. So I'm actually just going to take a um, couple minutes and just kind of check in with my body. So I have notes here for myself based on my therapy session last week. So I was talking about how I will feel physical symptoms rather than having being aware of the emotion or, or I'll have the physical symptom and um, like the physical feeling and then I have this disconnect between the emotion. So my solar plexus, so kind of right here, like where the ribs kind of come together in your, in your belly, um, is where I really feel a lot of my emotion. And um, like particularly like if I'm talking to my therapist or if I'm talking to somebody really like about my thoughts, feelings, whatever, um, I will feel like this most intense, like it feels like someone has like a, like my solar plexus, it's, it's as if my solar plexus is a stress ball and someone is just squeezing the absolute crap out of it. Or like all of my nerve endings are my mo in my body are just like concentrated right here. And so I likened it to a uh, misbehaving child where I only ever pay attention, because like, why would you? I only ever pay attention to this part of my body when it's acting up. I like a child who is acting up um, and for, for, for attention, right? So the idea is like, can I pay attention to my solar plexus, give it love and compassion when things are just feeling fine and just kind of check in with it during the day because it seems like there's like a, this is, this is going to get kind of woo woo, but it's as if there's like this physical repository of 20 years of like grief and stress and hypervigilance that's like all just crammed into this little space in my body. And it's like this time capsule of, of emotion. And for so many years, I've had to have these protective walls up around around my heart, around my psyche to get me through what it had to get me through. And so, um, yeah, basically like there's this little warrior right here that is uh, struggling. And so I need to give her some, um, some quality time. And in like child development, we would call it catch her being good, right? So rather than waiting till she's acting up and addressing her then, um, just dress her, give her positive reinforcement throughout the day. So I'm gonna kind of check in with myself, check in with my solar plexus, give her some love and compassion before I move on with the rest of my day. All right, it's 10 to five. I have seven check-ins left and then I have people who responded to me so I'll be getting back to them. So it's definitely a pretty long work day on Mondays. Um, having, I've had all the rest of my food so far. Now I'm on to my veggies. So um, I already ate the cucumber. Those like snacking cucumbers, love those, like living on those. And then I just have uh, like tomato medley kind of thing and some different bell peppers. And then of course I'm drinking water all day long as well. So yeah, I've moved to standing at this point. Um, just like you start to get like this. It's a little posture advice for you. The closer you can keep your elbows to your body, the more able you're gonna be able to keep your ears over your shoulders. So when we start to move our arms out in front of us like this, we're naturally gonna lean forward like this, which really happens a lot when we're sitting down. So I find when I can break my day up in sitting, like I'm literally, this is nothing fancy. You, are, you saw you saw from the time lapse, you were sitting on my computer, sitting on the microwave, which is on top of the refrigerator. So it's not like the most glamorous standing desk situation, but it's a really nice way to break up um, the sitting all day long. Last week, I sat so much on Monday, my butt literally hurt and I have a really nice chair. But anyway, little tip for you, the closer you can keep your elbows to your body, the more able you're to keep your ears over your shoulders and not end up like that, where we end up with that like, dowager's hump, constant neck and trap paint, all that kind of stuff. We want to be able to point our chest at our computer screen. Make sure your computer screen is high enough so you're not having to look down at it, but it's at eye level. All right, it is 6.40. I didn't realize it was that late. I'm gonna pack things up, get ready to go home. Will I read when I get home? I don't know, we'll see. It's been a long day. Just remembered I had to get dog food on my way home. Seriously considered just feeding him turkey slices tonight, but 
I got the goods. So you know what's weird about Bake Off? When they change cast members, like there's absolutely zero context as an American for who these people are. So like I only know the people on Bake Off, like the cast members as people from Bake Off. So I don't know, this new lady just joined the show. I have no clue who she is, but looking forward to finding out. I'm so confused. No, okay. So I started the day off with a Facebook post from my, like a top, Facebook post on my timeline from my mother-in-law telling me happy belated birthday. I missed it by a day. Actually, she was early by a month. <laughs> my birthday is November 29th, not October 29th. She gets it wrong in some way every year. Love that about her. So then I see some Amazon packages and I thought it was just my like protein bars and coffee that I have on subscribe and save, but it was like a weird shaped box. Like wooden utensils, like they're nice, but I didn't order those. So that was weird. And then there's this box, which I thought, well, maybe the box, maybe the box is the, the, the protein, the protein bars and the, and the coffee. No. It's this lovely cast iron pot. <laughs> and in that in that box, there was a lovely note from my mother-in-law. So, so I got my birthday present early from my mother-in-law. So happy 40th already. So it is now 812. I got, I have 6,632 steps today, which not bad considering it was a very sedentary day. Like, I mean, other than the standing that I did, um, that helps you be a little bit more active um not just sitting at the desk the entire day um but I, I walked well first of all I trained somebody this morning so it's about 1200 steps an hour when I'm training somebody so I had that and then the walk to and from the gym so that added to it plus the workout itself um and then literally every now and then I will just pace around the office um like answering texts or email social media kind of stuff um just to get a little bit of movement and get out of my little room um, but yeah, basically I'm just gonna get ready for bed, um, enjoy, enjoy my new, my new pot and utensils and, um, probably finish this episode of Bake, Bake Off and, um, go to sleep. So no reading today. I just, 12 hour day, my brain cannot handle it. I just, I can't. So it's just gonna be a veg out, relax kind of night. Anxiety is still quite high. I think I actually might, uh, take something for that and, um. See if, see if tomorrow might be a better day in terms of anxiety levels, but just got a piece of broccoli out of my teeth. So hopefully you couldn't see that before. So with that, I will wrap things up. This was a Monday in my life. The thing is every day of the week is different for me. So, um, you know, Tuesday is going to be quite a different day. Tomorrow is my last day of working in person at the gym. It's Halloween. I will be done at 6 PM. I have a 6 AM client and I will end at 6 PM at the gym tomorrow night. So Happy Halloween. Thank you for watching. Remember, every day is a great day for a great day, even if it's a 12-hour work day all day.